Okay, how you doing? Uh, Robert Marzullo here, and this is how to sketch comic book heroes part two. And one of the uh, requests in the comments was to show and finish this and kind of show some of the uh, uh, the muscles and the way I would draw the legs. So we already kind of explained the upper body, but I'll cover uh, some of the torso uh, more in detail. And for the legs, um, let's get started. Okay, so. Right brush, right there. Okay, so for the legs, I generally would do the same flowing method where you flow the anatomy, uh, overlapping. Uh, obviously, we're on an angle here. You start off with your cylinders, like so. Get them in position. Um, you can break down the knee into kind of another pyramid shape if you want to simplify that. I always draw like this little bit of uh, skin, a little pudge over the knee like that. Uh, the bone showing uh, from the knee and then this it rolls back through here. This muscle kind of uh, comes around even though it's more from the back of the leg, the calf muscle. But you see it from the front right there. You've got a string muscle, and forgive me, you know, I don't know the terms. I'll have to look that up if you want to know those. But that kind of comes in front like this. And the calf muscle back around. And on this side, it goes longer and down the entire back of the leg, more or less. Where here, it's going to tend to um, bulge up and, and be more sharp and angular. And always kind of round the leg back out because you got to think of this form as coming down, then back forward for the the foot or boot or whatever they're wearing. And then the fact that it has to hit um, support back here and then come forward. And you know, obviously the the big toes over here, so you got to put this angle here. And then it can't look completely flat, so you got to put a little bit of depth there. And back, and, you know, keep in mind you got your uh, ankle here, and whatever kind of gear they're wearing, you're gonna have some wrinkles or some buildup of material right there, something like that. And for Pete's sakes, put a sole at the bottom of their shoe, or they're gonna catch a nail or something. Get a old nail in the foot, and that's not good. Okay, so. Back to the leg muscles. The best way to do legs I've found is take, you know, and try different things, you know, that see what works for you. But take this longer, uh, bulkier muscle that's at the front of the leg. Sometimes start there, and with that, you can kind of define. Okay, say this muscle goes like this, for instance. So now you can, knowing that this one goes behind it and under it, you can pull that down, and it seems to bunt right up to the knee or that bulge or right right in that area and then what I do is I'll bring it back and around like this you know and this is more defined than I would typically draw it I'll go back and erase lines and just add shading but I'm trying to get you to see kind of how I'm perceiving and this is just my perception of how that muscle interacts with the other muscle um, now the other one same thing it comes up through here but it's going to come higher on the leg here and I want to say that's a larger muscle and I always draw it larger and it just goes up through the side of the leg here and then there's like this little string muscle that comes through here or tendon or something um, and then I always start to break this off a little bit and then replicate that on the other side but now you know trying to envision oops. I'll leave that alone for a second, even though that looks weirdly distorted. Um, try to envision the same thing. So you replicate that. You start with maybe this uh, little muscle here. I'm sorry, little muscle here. 
like so. And these kind of widen out and then thin down. And this one's going to come down and kind of rest on the knee area. But then it bu bunches up and then rolls back the, uh, oh god, I can't remember the name of that. Interior, anterior. There. Again, feel free to look those up and shoot, shoot me back a comment and educate me for for sake. I need to actually look into learning all the uh, actual names if I'm going to sit there and explain this stuff. So then uh, the other muscles come back through here. You get the back of the leg, which starts thicker, thins down. You're going to get the, the bone that kind of protrudes through. Uh, the kneecap again, again breaking it down with smaller shapes like a wedge shape or a little bulge over the knee there, like that, and the calf muscle. Under here, ankle. Um, always try to draw the feet in different pointing directions. I think it makes for a little bit more interesting standard pose. You know, this is a very static up and down pose, so it's nothing exciting. Um, but the best you can hope for with these is try to get, you know, your goal when doing these really straightforward poses, even though this one isn't a prime example of that, and I'm a little bit off in my uh, proportions kind of a lot, but um, the thing that you're trying to do or you want to think about when drawing legs is giving it giving it a base, you know, this guy's standing there, um, you know, if he looks like, I've seen off too often when people draw this stuff, their character looks like they're floating and that's that's what you got to avoid. So, you know, you see, you put the shadow under it and I almost always draw that immediately to see if, you know, I kind of conveyed that. Like for instance, to me, and this just might be me, this foot looks planted more firmly and so it's solid to the ground. This one is floating just a little bit more and it's higher up, which I don't think it should be in this pose. So that's got to be lowered. And, you know, past that, I think it's the way that it, you know, the angles in which they hit to what you're considering your ground plane. Say we do some kind of horizon line back here real low. You know, then you can check and, you know, see if that looks like it's uh, it's grounded well, you know, which it should be. That's the point of these uh, these stances. You want to make him look like he's grounded and he's firm and strong in his uh, resolve and he's saying something tough or whatever or, you know, making a statement. But if the legs look like he's floating there, then, then the character is not going to be very pronounced. It's not going to be as impactful. So... Alright, so, and up into here, you know, you got the abdomen, which, which comes down. You want to kind of draw the hip uh, hip sections here. You got the little uh, love handles here. Uh, the muscles that string across the side, and then your, your stomach muscles through here. Okay, and again, if light source is coming this way, then chances are I'm going to first block in the shadowing for the entire shape, say this leg, and get in the bulk of the shadows first. You know, pick what you like to do. I like to sketch in my shadows sometimes. Sometimes I'll trace them in. Um, I've seen I've seen people say both, you know, is better in, in certain situations, so pick what works for you. I like to block them in on certain things like this and then zoom in like that and then start to push and pull a little bit more and figure out exactly where I want the lines to go for the shadowing. And then I'll come back and like I said about the um, secondary light, I'll come back on you know something like this 
and show where the secondary light is hitting the back of the leg and the back of the muscles like that. Okay. So you kind of see the, uh, the way that works out there uh, for the legs. Now, uh, somebody also wanted to know about torsos and the anatomy to a torso, so I'll try to uh, explain that real quick. Uh, let's see here. And, you know, everything applies uh, with that. Always find your center. So let's do that. Let's do a center. Uh, let's break down the shape of a torso. Uh, I always think kind of the uh, Superman symbol in a way, right? It's kind of a shield effect. That's kind of like what the chest represents to me, like this bowed out shield. So then, you know, kind of just work out the shape. Shoulders, collarbones. All right, now the chest. You know, I think sometimes with that simpler the better. Um, you know, that those two little half moon shapes like that pretty much work. The chest should basically, when it comes to the middle, it should pretty much break apart into two separate muscles and flatten out. The area here shouldn't be nearly as bulky as the area here. Why? Because the five muscles in the uh, chest roll and they pinch together and that's what gives you that that bulk there so keep that in mind that's why you know I've seen a lot of guys when they come up to draw on the chest here they shade it real far down sometimes go as far as to erase the erase the lines um, right there to show the depth here they'll put the big shadow here under the bulk of the muscle and erase the lines here to convey that depth you know that the mass is here Okay, so shoulders, and I'll tell you, honestly, shoulders and chest can be a you know, study of their own. There's a lot of complexity there, especially in the movement of the arms, and, and uh, especially for comic book drawing, because there's just a lot of expression there and foreshortening and all kinds of stuff that happens there. So we'll just do a quick one um, to explain the torso. So here, you know, you I would suggest that you start to define uh, the rib cage almost immediately and you know not in all honesty a lot of the uh, comic book rib cages are nowhere near accurate and neither is this one this is very impressionistic of what the rib cage is supposed to look like um, same thing with the, the six packs I've always noticed they're way off you know um, six packs on, on people are generally all over the place as far as size and then in comic drawing they'll have these perfectly chiseled symmetrical all the uh, the six or the eight packs are identical that's just not the case with real, uh, real anatomy so okay so here's that I go, this is more for comic illustration so I'm assuming that's why you're watching this okay so there's our, our wings our lats Finally, I know one. Lateris dorsalis maximus. Probably not. Alright, then there, you come down into here, and then the little love handles. Actually, I'm making this guy too wide for an actual comic character. Son of a gun. I forgot to make that a separate layer, that's why I keep dealing with that. Yep. Yeah got to be way thinner to be a comic book hero so let's go back to here and let's bring that way in oh, and I'm on a way bigger brush now okay so let's pretend like this is acceptable at this point in the belt Okay, so for illustrating the torso area or shading it, 
what I would recommend um, is first attacking the bigger areas so you know you're trying to bring out this uh, boat out super chest so you shadow there under the shoulders here you want to show a little bit of shadow here so it makes uh, the chest stick out even further under the shoulders and then you know each abdomen so maybe that's the bulkier shadows depending you know this is an overly shadowed character that's still somewhat in the light so there's that and then you can come in and finesse it and add your detail and show your your muscles in more detail like so Now, one more thing, um, and this obviously just shows how I might draw this, but, so it doesn't explain a ton, but one more good practice, one more thing I would recommend, uh, it's actually, I wouldn't even say practice, I would think it's mandatory if you're going to draw comics. You need to practice drawing something like this, okay, and hopefully you'll do better than I did right there, because I think that's ugly, but, um, and then move over and I generally do, do it right side by side but instead of uh, doing that I'm, I'm just gonna draw it down here to show you what I'm talking about you need to always practice drawing a front view and really working on rounding that out like for instance if I wanted to round this form out I would carry all my shading not these lines I'm trying to just show you the direction I would do the shading so that now this point would stand out more into the light and all this stuff down here would get shaded down to round that character out okay but the other good uh, tip or trick or practice that you should do is take that same form now and draw it from the side perspective you know and that's how you're gonna learn your uh, proportions and your scaling and be able to draw a comic book that conveys properly from page to page by doing little little steps like this and tricks like that and then once you get good at that, you want to do the same idea with uh, different perspectives, extreme perspective. Um, it's very important because without it, you you just won't be able to convey a good story, uh, especially if your characters are constantly changing from panel to panel. It just you know takes the reader out of the out of the uh, story. So you got to keep them in there. So you're basically looking at the top one, and you you know you can do this side by side and draw diagram lines like this across and it's it's really not that bad once you do it a couple times but in this case I'm trying to do it off to the side and use the body forms like this it rolls down through the lower back you got that lat coming through here you got the rib cage kind of going like this the stomach and then your obliques I think they're called love handles and then you'll even notice like you see your rib cage through the back a little bit there this is like your shoulder blade area and then your your trap comes up through here something like that And I'm not drawing the arm because I'm trying to show more the the uh, torso than the actual arm. But always remember uh, these thick to thin lines. It really helps. So, if you're trying to convey depth on this chest muscle, thin line here where the light's basically hitting, and then down towards this bottom portion, put a nice thick line, thin it out here, thick line here, and as you continue to do that throughout your drawing, it uh, it actually conveys mass to the the line art or to the uh, the shapes and the line art. So, I think it's a good way to really make your drawings pop and 
And you see, I just can't st stop. When I start scribbling on this stuff, I just keep having to go and go. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and stop this, and I hope that uh, that answers a couple questions that I just had. So the leg anatomy, a little bit more in depth, and the torso. Um, not the best examples, but I'm more or less trying to convey, you know, how to go about doing them. You know, obviously use your own research, find the artists that you like and that you admire and see what they've studied. Um, and then just practice doing it in different ways. Like if you take, you know, your arm and you draw it, and you do like this cone method, which I think it's called, cone, and then that kind of works for you, but you're like, oh, it's lacking something, it's not really finesse it's not polished you know then take that same one come down and try a totally different method try to just look at it now and then draw it with the rope method where that's simply saying that because you know the positioning of the muscles you can interconnect them and kind of rope them together you know this one goes there this goes under there that goes around there so on and so forth and then try that method and if that comes out looking more um, natural for you then that might be the style that you need to take or the direction that you need to take with your artwork to get that that fluid feel or look that you're going for um, you know so just try different things it's all about experimentation experimentation will lead to your best results in artwork every time I think so um, some of the coolest things I've learned with art have been you know almost mistakes or going back the next day and looking at something going whoa that, that came out really cool last night when I was tired I thought it was horrible uh, and vice versa so okay well thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe and to comment and let me know what else I can do to uh, help you along in your in your art career there so thanks very much have a good one bye